Okay, this is the garage tour. And this is the garage pedestrian door which goes into the living space. And it should have a spring on it, a self-closing spring. Because as it is now, there was a fire in the garage. There's nothing to keep it from walking into the living space. So we're supposed to have self-closing springs on those. This is the garage door opener control button. It's not supposed to be closer to the floor threshold than five feet, so little hands don't get up to it. And it's supposed to have a warning notice posted next to it. That's the metal door rising now. Coming along, the structure faces east. So this garage car entry faces west. This is the garage east interior wall. And this is the main water shutoff valve for the structure. And this valve is perpendicular. That's kind of rough. <laughs> when this valve is perpendicular, the water's off. If you got an emergency, come turn the water off. That's pretty rough right there, I gotta tell you. Parallel, water's on. So you do have one, it is in there. I see them installed so that when the water's off, the door will not close. That's not the way this one works. There's the thermostat for the water heater. It's a tankless water heater. Of course, it's a year old. Gas sediment trap, GFCI protected. This is your pressure relief valve, not a temperature pressure relief valve, but a pressure relief valve. This is a tankless water heater. It's not supposed to have more than five bins. One, two, three, one going down, four, one going out, five, one going down to the ground, six. It has more than five bins more than five 90 degree bends. Another thing, City of Dallas, I don't understand where I'm playing all, but you have a vacuum breaker in this line. And the only way to have a vacuum breaker in this line would be if to have a safety pan installed under here. Some tankless water heaters require safety pans. All from the same manufacturer. This manufacturer, some of them, they're, the manufacturer, you read the instructions, some of them require safety pans. Some of them just leave it as an option. Some of them have a strong recommendation. They never say don't put one in, but in some places they have it as an option, so you might want to think about that. This is a high efficiency one, so I'm thinking that it's probably going to, if you can read the manufacturer's instructions, I'm thinking you're going to find a safety pan. This is your condensate line because it captures so much heat and it runs so efficiently. This is your condensate line. And then it goes outside as well. Now, the thing with this condensate line is, that's not condensation, that's not water, it's condensate, and it's very acidic. And most manufacturers, again, we'll see what we can find out here, but most manufacturers recommend that you have a neutralizing filter on your condensate line. So we do not have a neutralizing filter, we do not have a safety pan, we do not have a vacuum breaker. We have more than five bends on the 90-degree 90, uh, 90 bends on the pressure relief valve. And then up here, see that right there? That's for the plumber. That's for the plumber. See, you can just bolt this in. And if it's an existing home, you, you can bolt it in and it'll work. It's working. I got some hot water earlier. It's working. But to finish the job, besides just bolting it in and going to the beer store or wherever it is that plumbers go between the job and the shop, trying to say besides saving that amount of time for whatever it is they want to use it on okay this tape is supposed to be, have been removed and the actual gas pressure to the structure is measured and the valve the gas valve is dialed in for maximum efficiency I'm not saying that it's not going to work that's not what I'm saying I'm saying it might not and it might but it, it might not be working as efficiently as it should because the installation was incomplete. That's all I'm saying. Coming along here, this is the north wall. This is the lawn sprinkler system. The zones are supposed to be labeled. They're not labeled. I don't see them. And we got some instructions in here. We're going to be able to run it. I uh, don't see a care and use manual. Don't see that. This is more GFCI for the garage. This is the electric service panel. I just took this off. There's your energy ratings. I wonder what they said about that air conditioner. 
Oh, they're calling it a Sears 16. Okay. That's what they're saying. Okay. This is printing. This is handwriting. It's not cursive. It's handwriting. This is printing. These are supposed to be printed just like this. It's supposed to be printed. And the manufacturer wants duplication. Duplication. See all this? It's not filled out. It's not filled out. How about this one? It's not filled out. What goes in there? Microwave's only a 120. What goes in there? That's not complete. Air conditioning unit, they're saying it's 40 amps. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Yep. The condensing unit is properly fused. Coming along here. See these? See these screws? There's five of them. See these holes? There's six of them. We're missing a screw. It's supposed to have a, a rubber plastic protector on this thing so that people don't get shocked. It's a relatively new code requirement. It was in place when this structure was built. I mean, here's the L1, L2. This is your bonding, your, your main neutral. You see that white tape that's wrapped around there to identify it for you so that you know that that's the main bond. If you don't know that's the main bond, without that tape, you don't belong in this, this panel. But it's supposed to be wrapped three times. Three times, not once, not once, three. Not three in a row, three straggle, staggered. Coming along here, see all that paint, all that nice paint inside of here? That paint's on these wires. That paint is on these wires. Coming on along, just a little farther. See all that paint in here? See all that paint? Look at this bus bar. Look inside there, can you see that paint on that bus bar? Can you see that paint on that bus bar? Okay, I'm seeing paint on the panel, but I'm not seeing paint on the breakers but I'm seeing paint on the bus bar behind the breakers. Huh. What does that mean? No paint on the breakers. Paint on the bus bar behind the breakers. That's what it means. Paint's been on this. Coming on along. What do we have here? These are screws. Screws are fast and they're tight. I get that but they do not have the same shear strength as a nail. Nails have more shear strength than screws. So if this structure was to experience a tornado, for example, this panel, this cabinet, load center, call it what you will, would stand a much better chance of staying in place if it had been nailed in properly instead of screwed in improperly. And then, we're not supposed to have more than an eighth of an inch, more than an eighth of an inch difference between the sheetrock and the cabinet. I know that's tight. Oh my goodness, that's tight. You know what? They do the windows tight. Oh, that's tight. I know that's tight. You go buy a radio at Hawk Electronics and they put it in your car dash, they'll get it tight. Oh man, how can you expect us to get it that tight? I don't know, but the code does. That's what it says in the code book. There it is, all these gaps. Then, we're supposed to have a bonding location posted inside the cabinet so that you know where the system is bonded. And we've got so much storage in this garage, sometimes I can find it, sometimes I can. I look for it. That's what I do, I'm here to look. But over there, there it is. There it is, right back there. Futuro did that. 220, whatever that is. I'll see if I can get in there. I want to tear up all their stuff. It's for warranty work. Do not move. Per Joe. So, I don't know. I don't want to take responsibility for that. If I feel like I can do it. Okay. Back to the garage overhead door. We got the warning stickers on both corners like we're supposed to have. We have pull handles inside and outside, just like we're supposed to have. We have the warning notice. We didn't have that warning notice. We did not have this over by the drill, drill button. We're supposed to have one here, and we do. We're supposed to have one there, and we don't. 
We don't have one there. Coming on along. The optic sensors are not supposed to be higher from the ground than six inches. They're supposed to be secured to the wall with staples, insulated staples. I don't even know what these little junk, what is this? What's that for? That's just weird. All right, and then the manual door lock. Looks like they had it one time. You can see where a screw used to be there. There should be a screw, a bolt, stuck in there because as it is now, you can lock it. Push the button and wreck your door. You could, uh, somebody could come home and lock it. You come home and you don't know and you're tired and you push the button and you can wreck your door. Now, if the door opener wasn't here, you'd want to be able to use that. But since the door opener's in use, then that should have been uh, disabled. It just should have. There's another optic sensor right there. Weird junctions. Uh, higher from the sidewalk. See these little ants right here? Nobody likes them. They're nobody's friend. They're not wood destroying insects though. There is a wood destroying insect ant, but that's not that's not it. None of the windows have screens. It's pretty typical with new construction. Let's try this. Bear with me. Or you can just bail, because this basically we're done here. And then I run. Help me, help me, help me. There we go. The optic sensor works. 